Secondary amines contain two R groups linked to the amino nitrogen, and because they do not have two hydrogens linked to that nitrogen, they react differently with ketones and aldehydes than primary amines, which react to form amines containing a CN double bond. Secondary amines cannot form a CN double bond and form a neutral product, and so the result of condensation when a secondary amine reacts with a ketone or aldehyde is a structure known as an enamine. That's the structure we see right here. It's called an enamine because it's got an alkene connected directly to an amino group. Enamine is the product here. And like the imine condensation, a molecule of water is given off. So we can think of this as a kind of condensation reaction. As in the reaction of primary amines with ketones and aldehydes, we need to use a weak acid for this to avoid protonating the nucleophile. And acetic acid is typically the acid of choice. Now, the mechanism in the first half is highly analogous to the mechanism of imine formation. The amine nucleophile adds to the carbonyl group to create a zwitter ion in the first step with O- and N- charges, like so. And a couple of proton transfers lead us to a neutral product in which OH and NR2 are linked to a common carbon, and this is an example of a carbonyl amine. And I'll just point out one more time the analogy between this structure and a hemiacetal when alcohol nucleophiles were used. In that case, we had an OR group here. Now we have an NR2, since a secondary amine with two R groups was used, and we have an OH uh, associated with the former carbonyl oxygen. As in imine formation, the mechanism doesn't stop here. The mechanism doesn't stop until a molecule of water is given off. To kick off the second stage of the mechanism, the hydroxyl oxygen in the carbonyl amine is protonated, and this leads to the protonated intermediate we see here. And again here, yes, the hydroxyl oxygen is not as basic as the amino nitrogen, but this protonation is going to happen to a small extent, and this will carry the reaction forward to a point where H2O can be eliminated. And in fact, that happens right now, as nitrogen's lone pair is well positioned to kick off H2O as a leaving group. Now, the resulting structure here is known as an imenium ion. It's the conjugate acid of an imine is one way to think about this. But this particular type of imenium ion is interesting because there's no NH in this structure. There's no proton we can remove from the nitrogen to get a neutral imine. Without that NH, the most acidic hydrogen in this structure is alpha to the CN double bond, linked to a carbon directly adjacent to the CN double bond. Removal of this proton highlighted in blue is what's going to lead us to the final product. So what can happen here is deprotonation at this carbon. It's known as an alpha carbon because it is one carbon away from the imine carbon. So deprotonation at that alpha carbon leads to a product with a carbon-carbon rather than carbon-nitrogen double bond. And remember, that was necessary because there were no NH bonds in this imenium ion. The only place we can remove a proton, the best place, is alpha to the imine group, to the CN double bond, if you like. Now this resulting structure is the enamine with the CC double bond and the NR2 group directly linked to it. And it's important to see the enamine as a kind of carbonyl analog, as a kind of analog of a CO double bond since it's derived from the CO double bond through a condensation process. We can recover the carbonyl compound from an enamine through a hydrolysis process. We'll discuss that in another video. But for the time being, I want to, to help you understand that it's important to train yourself to recognize this as derivable from a carbonyl compound in which this carbon is the carbonyl carbon of that starting material. One other thing that's worth noting about enamine condensations is that we can imagine a situation where the two alpha carbons are different, right? Say I had a different hydrogen on the left-hand side than on the right-hand side. The result could be two different constitutionally isomeric enamines, for example, one with a more substituted double bond and one with a less substituted double bond. And this immediately brings up the issue of site selectivity, which enamine is favored, which enamine forms under whatever conditions. We're actually not going to concern ourselves with that in this course. We will only study enamine condensations of aldehydes, in which case there's only one alpha carbon only one place to remove an alpha proton, and symmetrical ketones where both alpha carbons are equivalent, so there are no regiochemical issues. We'll never need to decide between two isomeric, constitutionally isomeric enamine products. 
Now is a good time to take a look at the Wolf-Kishner reduction again, which we'll recall involved the reduction of a CO double bond adjacent to an aromatic ring down to a CH2 group. So there are two hydrogens here where the carbonyl group was previously. This reaction involves a hydrozone intermediate, and its structure is drawn right here. That condensation we looked at in the video on imine formation. Following formation of the hydrozone, we see some chemistry that takes advantage of resonance stabilization built into the conjugate base of a hydro hydrozone and the fact that this can eliminate nitrogen. And this is essentially the basis of this mechanism. So following formation of the hydrozone, we can deprotonate at that hanging NH2 group to create a resonance stabilized anion. This is a good opportunity to pause and make sure you can draw a resonance structure of this anion showing how the charge is delocalized. We can protonate that at carbon, and this is where one of the new CH bonds comes from. And at this point, in essence, we can repeat the cycle again. And what really drives this is at this point, we can beta eliminate to kick off N2, which is a gas. And that N2 is eliminated irreversibly. We end up with this carbanion, which is very rapidly protonated under the aqueous conditions by water. And the result is the final product in which we have now two CH2, uh, two CH bonds rather, where we had a CO double bond originally. So this is entirely based ultimately on the elimination of nitrogen gas in two from the hydrozone starting material mediated by base KOH. And the elimination and the deprotonation is really need a kick, which is why heat is required in this reaction.